what's crackalackin'? My name's Amel and you're watching Newsbreak. Just when we thought lockdowns were a thing of the past, they're back. But not for us. Bees in New South Wales are currently in lockdown after an outbreak of the deadly varol mite, which could be a bit of a buzzkill for bees around the country. Here's Joe. Ha! You're stuck inside. I wonder what that feels like. I wouldn't know because I'm free. <laughs> Guess who's stuck inside now? You are. <laughs> the truth is, this isn't a laughing matter. Varroa destructor, or varroa mite, was found in beehives at the port of Newcastle in New South Wales. These tiny reddish-brown pests are devastating for bees. Around the world, they've killed millions, maybe even billions of bees. They can cause malformations and spread deadly viruses that cripple bees' ability to fly, gather food and pollinate plants. Which is a big problem, because a lot of our food and native plants rely on pollination from bees. And then there's our honey industry, which is worth around $70 million a year. Australia is the only major honey producing country to still be free of this pest, so it's really important to get this outbreak under control. Authorities have set up a biosecurity zone, set a statewide bee lockdown, and ordered that all hives within 10 k's of the outbreak site be destroyed. There's a lot of, you know, disbelief, a lot of sadness. You know, we're just sort of helpless at the moment. The results from the 2021 census have just been released and this is how Australia's changed. Since 2016, there are two million more Aussies, with millennials and baby boomers making up the majority of the population. For the first time in census history, less than half of Australians said they were Christian, with Islam and Hinduism being the fastest growing religions, while almost 40% of Aussies said they have no religion at all. More than 800,000 Aussies now identify as Indigenous, which is up 25% since 2016. Now, we're about to meet some Aussie kids learning the basics of artificial intelligence. Oi, that's my line. <sighs> They've been doing a US designed program that some teachers reckon should be rolled out across Australia. Here's Gladys. Oh, my line again. <laughs> There's nothing like practicing your Italian with a robot. It's the kind of programmable technology this school in Western Sydney is trying to use more of. They've just introduced a one-day course to teach students more about future tech they'll use and need later in life, including artificial intelligence. It's kind of going to like take over the world in the future. So yeah, it's a, I think it would be good for other students to learn about AI. That's when machines are designed to learn from and react to their environment, like a human one. It's in things like our security, search engines, and maps. It's also something experts say we have to be cautious about, which is why this class is learning about deep fakes, digitally altered videos that seem very, very real. I think it'll get to the point where people will literally just don't know what's real, what's fake. So hopefully classes like this can prepare students for the future and all the challenges new technology may bring. <laughs> well, this is a showstopper. Just like these next stories. Hmm, let's see. <laughs> now this is a real showstopper. A human bike. Oh, wait, what happened? That's all right. Here in Copenhagen, Denmark, we've also got big bikes, cupcake bikes and bike bikes. It's all to celebrate the Tour de France, a massive 23-day bike race which kicks off this Friday. And for the first time, it'll be starting in Denmark. And now when there's a long queue like this, you know you've got a showstopper in store. It's the Wimbledon Championships. It's the first time since 2019 they've got full crowds back and they sure are keen. That rhymed. Finally, to a show that's had people talking everywhere. After a two-year wait, Paul McCartney finally got to perform at Glastonbury in the UK, one of the biggest music festivals in the world. About 100,000 people went to see him perform alongside music legends Bruce Springsteen and the Foo Fighters' Dave Grohl. What a showstopper. Hmm. All right, well, show's over. See ya.